Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the White House in Washington, D.C. Please give yourself a round of applause and welcome. <laughs> audience here today. If you guys are here in the building, that means you made it, okay? You're not in any trouble. Don't do any sudden movements. Don't steal any napkins from the bathroom. Don't stay out of trouble and you'll be okay. Uh, we have some very special guests here today. We have some incredible performances and we're all getting ready for President Obama's final State of the Union address, which will take place in just a little bit over an hour. But, like I said, we have some surprise guests and we're going to kick the show off with the biggest surprise of the evening. I'd like you all to give a warm welcome to the Vice President of the United States of America. say thank you. Please sit down. I came by, I came by to say thank you. And I mean this sincerely. You and all those folks you are watching are the reason why we've made it. You know, I was asked today by the national press what it's like. It's the eighth and final State of the Union the President's going to be delivered. And I remember the first one. I remember the first one. America was on its knees. Literally on its knees. And everyone was wondering, not not figuratively, literally, was America going to fall off the cliff? Or are we going to move from the greatest recession in American history into a depression? And the president stood there, and he instilled confidence in the American people. Well, since then, we've gone from crisis to recovery, and we are on the verge of a genuine resurgence in the United States of America. Look, Thank you. One of the things I love about you all is... of Barack and me, it's because of you. It's because of the grit of the American people. Some of you heard me say before, it's never, 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 never been a good bet to bet against America and the American people. Never been a good bet. Not one single time, it's not hyperbole, not one single time in our history when the American people give a fighting chance, have they ever, ever, ever let their country down? You know, I, I do a lot of foreign travel. I was in, I was traveling throughout China with President Xi. We were in Chengdu, and I spent a lot of time in private dinners with him after we do our events. And two of us were sitting there with interpreters, and he looked at me, and he said, it's a true story. He said, can you define America for me? And I said, yes, I can do that easily. One word, possibilities. That's the single most precise definition of America. about what makes us so different. We're a land of immigrants. We're a land of change. But what we all believe in is possibilities. Give it a shot. There's not a single thing we can't do. Not a single thing we can't do. I got elected when I was 29 years old to the United States Senate. And I was called the optimistic young kid. I'm more optimistic today about America's chances in the world than I was when I was 29. And I'm not joking. I mean that sincerely. Some of you heard me say this before. We are better positioned than any nation in the world to lead the world in the 21st century. We have the, we have the best educated. We have the most productive workforce in the world. We have the most agile venture capitalists in the world. We have a system where you can breathe free, where you can think, think as Jobs said, think different where we can innovate. I mean, we're on the cusp of so many enormous changes in the life sciences, in the social sciences, as well as in the physical sciences. I mean, the stuff that you're going to live through in the next 2, 5, 10, 15 years, from cures for cancer to aircraft that goes 22,000 miles an hour subsonic, there's so many possibilities. We've got to get out of our own way. We got to fix the political system. It's been broken. It's been broken and it cannot sustain being broken. The flood of unaccounted for, unattributed money in tens of billions of dollars coming, billions of dollars coming into the system, 
middle class people know when you have 550 or so families contributing 40% of all the contributions, they know they're not going to be in the game. They're not going to be in the game. And the one, I want to tell you, the conversation the president and I had when he asked me to be on the ticket with him, he said, do you have any questions? I have one question. Do you genuinely mean what you say about restoring the middle class? I've always been referred to my whole career as middle class Joe. Down here, that's not meant as a compliment. It means you're not sophisticated. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. But I know the middle class, and I know why we are the nation we are. When the middle class does well, the poor have a way up, and the wealthy do very well. That's the thing. Our growth of the notion of possibilities and growth in the middle class has been the social and political glue that's held this country together. And they're in trouble. They're in trouble. So the president, with all your help, has gotten us up on our feet now. We're starting to run, but now we've got to finish the job. He said before, the single most significant need for the political system today is restore the middle class. And that's what this last year is about, nailing this down. And part of it is getting big, big money out of politics. We can't, we need amendments to do that. I introduced a constitutional amendment 35 years ago to do that. It didn't go anywhere, but we gotta shame people. We gotta shame people into making sure that they understand, that the public understands, that we, it says we the people, not we the contributors. That's how it starts off. No, I'm serious about this. I'm deadly earnest. You want to change one thing that will change the political system? Change the way we finance our elections. That will fundamentally change the system and give the middle class and the working class a fighting chance. And there's so much, so much the president's going to talk about tonight. He's going to talk about the reasons why we should think about this. Why, why do we have presidential candidates out there on the other team talking about America being on the balls of its heels, America being down? We remain the most respected country in the world. We continue to lead the world. There's problems. They're real. And some of them are going to take time, but most of them are exaggerated. Exaggerated. we got a lot of work to do. So what the president's going to talk about tonight is how we do that work, how we can do that work. We plan on finishing. We plan on finishing strong. And when we finish, we want to make sure that we own the finish line. We, the United States of America, once again, owns the finish line. Because when we do well, the rest of the world does much better. When we do well, the rest of the world does much better. And let me just say that uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, uh, the way you've treated my guy. Um, oh, I, I, I mean this sincerely. Uh, this guy has more character in his little finger than most people I know have in their whole body. I've been here for eight presidents, a lot of good men, a lot of good men. But you've stuck with him in the hard times, and you've been with him in the good times. So let's finish strong, folks. And again, all I want to say is i got to go up in the hill now. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I like going up in the hill. I, I, I don't mind. I actually like Republicans, and I like Democrats. I, I, you know, I, uh, I think most everybody up there in both parties uh, uh, has an instinct to want to do good, want to do well. Uh, you know, I learned a lesson. I'll conclude with this. I learned a lesson when I first got to the United States Senate. There was only one young, only one person younger than me ever elected to the United States Senate. And when I got there, it was uh, right after I got elected, there was an accident in my family. I lost my wife and daughter uh, between the time I got elected and the time I was supposed to be sworn in. And I didn't want to go up. I didn't want to be part of it. I, I wanted to, I had my brother and my sister who managed my campaign talking to the Democratic elected governor is that who would replace me and a really fine fine man a guy named Mike Mansfield who was a majority leader a man from from uh, uh, the state of Montana who everybody respected as enormous integrity he came to me and said look you got to come just come for six months here I am almost here later come for six months help us organize and we'll get started and uh, and I, I was so so dumb we had 58 senators. He didn't need me to organize anything. And if I left, there would have been a Democratic senator appointed in my place. But I said, okay. And he'd have me come to his office every Tuesday and give me an assignment. 
And I didn't, I thought every freshman got an assignment from the majority leader. No, our, <laughs> look, I'm the first United States Senator I ever knew. So it's, uh, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> and so one day I'm walking in, it was in May, end of May, my first year. And I walked on the floor, and a very conservative senator elected the same year I was, Jesse Helms from North Carolina, was excoriating Senator Bob Dole and Ted Kennedy for proposing the precursor to the Americans with Disabilities Act. But I had the meeting with the leader, and I just, I walked through the floor, and I went into my meeting, and I, I guess I looked angry. And he sat there, he said, what's the matter? He spoke in clipped tones, he said, what's the matter, Joe? And I said, I can't believe that, Jesse Helms. I said, he has no social redeeming value. He doesn't care about the handicap. He doesn't care. And I went on and on. He just sat there quietly like a Dutch uncle, and he looked at me, and he said, Joe, what would you say if I told you that Dot Helms, that's his wife, and Jesse, in Christmas of 69, were reading the Raleigh Observer in North Carolina, and there was a picture of a young man, I think he was 14 years old, in braces up to his hips with two canes who said, all I want for Christmas is someone to love me and adopt me, take me to their home. He said, what would you say if I told you they adopted that young man as their own? I said, I'd feel like a jerk. He said, well, they did. He said, Joe, let me tell you what I've learned. It's always appropriate to question another man or woman's judgment. It's never appropriate to question their motive because you don't know their motive. You may think you know their motive. What's happened today is we've gone from questioning each other's judgment where you can always end up resolving something. You can always get to a resolution. But if I say you're in the pocket of an interest group or you're not honest or you're this, it's awful hard to get to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're the most heterogeneous democracy in the world. We need to arrive at consensus Consensus requires compromise. Compromise is almost impossible to reach when we make it a pitched war. We make it based upon our assessment of the other guy's motive. That's what I'm counting on all of you to change. Change the tenor. Change the tone. America can not reach its potential unless we can reach a consensus, a consensus. That's what I personally, presumptuous me to do this, is counting on all of you to do. Argue the facts. Challenge the suppositions others make. But make it on the merits. Because this country is so ready, so ready to get up and move. We are so... I can't tell you how confident I am about the possibilities. Remember, it's all about possibilities. It's stamped in the DNA of every naturalized and native-born American. We can do anything, and I believe we can. Thank you very much for all you do. us to be able when we walk out this door to say we couldn't think of anything else that we didn't try to do, that, that we didn't shy away from a challenge because it was hard, uh, that we weren't timid or got tired or uh, somehow were thinking about the next thing because uh, there is no next thing. Uh, this is it and uh, never in our lives again will we have the chance to uh, do as much good as we do right now. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, we maximize it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the director of the Office of Public Engagement, Paulette Aniscoff. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. For a brief second, I just want you all to hearken back to inauguration in 2009. If you were there, you probably remember cold first. Is that the first thing that comes across? If you were watching it on television, you probably remember looking at people and thinking how cold it was. It was cold, 
But do you remember all of the optimism and possibility in the air? I am getting chills right now just thinking about it. Oh, it felt good. And I have to tell you, after seven years, I take a look at what we have accomplished, and I am so proud. 90% of Americans have health care right now. The unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is 5%. We never thought we would see that in this decade. Amazing. We have got climate change agreements going on and people doing work in 50 states and 200 countries. It's amazing. <laughs> Gay marriage, let's give it up for that. There is just so much hope and possibility still in the air. And if you had told me on my very first day in the White House when I had no idea what was going on and didn't know where to go to find my new class like it was college, I would have been so bursting with pride there at what we are going to be able to accomplish in the next seven years. And we still have an entire year left. And I will tell you the president is so fired up, so fired up that he wanted to make sure that Edith was in the box tonight. So she is there to make sure that everybody else is fired up. And I will tell you that he has let us know how much he wants us to all just get in there in this last year and make it as big as last year was. 2015 was a really big year. And he wants each and every one of you to be a part of that. And he says every day, it's yes, we can. There are some big challenges ahead. He's going to talk about them at State of the Union tonight. Some of the big challenges we have for the next many decades. And he is expecting all of you to use this year and the next few decades to organize and get out there and help him make more change because there is still a lot to get done. So enjoy your night, but be ready to go to work tomorrow. We will see you out there. Thank you. We've gotten amazing things done over the last seven years. You, know, you think about yanking ourselves out of an economic crisis, putting people back to work, making sure that our manufacturing base is strong, dealing with big challenges like health care, education, uh, our environment. There's still some kid out there who can't afford to go, go to college. Uh, there's still uh, somebody out there who's looking for work uh, that needs to retrain and doesn't know how to get access to it. There's still uh, a veteran uh, who isn't getting the services that they need and that they've earned. You know, traditionally, State of the Unions, a president gets up and they give a long laundry list of things that they want to accomplish legislatively. Uh, I want to identify three or four big ideas, three or four big things that we have to focus on. A lot of what we can do is to change you know, the political environment and change people's attitudes and, and start uh, a process where uh, change begins to happen. Uh, it's a relay race and it's important though you, that you get started. I want us to be able when we walk out this door to say uh, we couldn't think of anything else that we didn't try to do. If we can orient ourselves in the right way then I'm absolutely confident that we'll eventually get them accomplished and America will be better for it. Am I the only one uh, getting chills watching these videos? It's, um, it's, it's almost kind of like a, a, a bittersweet moment. You know, I remember voting uh, for the for the then Senator Obama uh, the first time and and to watch him be elected the president and to watch these state of the unions and to see it now uh, you know what we've done over the last few years and, and what we can accomplish and uh, once again Vice President Joe Biden did you guys know that was happening I mean that yeah I came with a good surprise right it's pretty and um I don't know. I don't know if any speaker is, is is more motivating than him. You know, I mean, once he dropped the the register in his voice and started talking, I, I feel motivated to do whatever he wants me to do. 
Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just, just what an incredible night. Uh, if, if you're just tuning in at home, once again, thank you so much for watching. We are here. We're enjoying each other's company. We're talking politics. We're talking policy. But more so than all of that, we're, we're, we're motivated. We're fired up. We're ready to go. And uh, we have a big night ahead of us as the president gets ready for his final State of the Union address here in D.C. All right, guys, uh, right now I'd like to introduce you to someone. Uh, the hashtag for you at home and for everyone that's here on your phone, I see you guys on your phone, use the hashtag uh, SOTU, S-O-T-U. Put that on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchat, your Facebook. What am I missing? I don't know what I'm missing. Is there, is there anything else? The Periscope, there's a new Facebook thing. that has, I think there's a camera set up in my bedroom. I don't know where all these cameras are. Uh, but I'd like to introduce you to the chief digital officer who runs all of that for the White House, Jason Goldman. Please uh, come out to the stage. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Always difficult to follow the vice president, but happy to be here tonight. Uh, I run the White House Office of Digital Strategy, so we look after the uh, various White House social media accounts like Facebook. How many people follow us on Facebook here? All right. How about follow us on Twitter? Cool. How about, how about follow us on Instagram? And just recently, we also launched the new White House Snapchat account. And just today, a few hours ago, we used Facebook Live for the first time from the Oval Office with the president talking about his remarks. All of these are part of a strategy that we talk about as meeting people where they are, which is that we feel that you should be able to choose how you want to interact with your government. That social media isn't about just broadcasting the message of government. It's about creating opportunities for you to engage and participate. And we think that you should have the choice of which way you want to choose to engage and participate. If that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on TV, whatever it is, we want to find a channel that works for you. The president, in the video you just saw, said that he doesn't want there to be an idea that we didn't try before we left, and we take that same approach in the Office of Digital Strategy, that we want to try everything we can, every way we can think of, uh, to connect you with the business of government, to make you feel more involved, to give you more opportunities to be engaged and be connected. So, so please do tweet, do uh, talk to us with hashtag so to tonight. Share your opinions of the event you saw here. For these, those of you watching at home, share your feelings about the, the State of the Union, because we listen, and that really does inform conversations. Now, I, so my also my honor to introduce tonight uh, our first musical guest of the evening. Uh, and it's, it's kind of an amazing thing, because uh, this band last night was meant to conclude their tour on the Colbert Show, and they decided to extend it by one night to play the last gig of their tour here at the White House. So it's my tremendous honor to introduce you to perform here tonight at the White House, the band Elvi. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm Matt, that's Brent. Uh, I'm not sure why Brent wanted to come in a, 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 a separate door. Brent's more theatrical than I am. Um, but thanks for having us. This is a, an incredible honor. Um, and uh, here we go.
just knew there was something missing They said no one could ever get me to sit and listen I was always trying to leave Baby, it got away from me It got away from me No time to plant our feet These things, they always come from nowhere No time to lay around We'll come back someday Nothing will ever just come to you It's only what you find around what you do if you don't hold it tight it'll leave I kept seeing you all around me I couldn't just stand here and wait until you found me to take you, to make you believe, baby, it got away from me, it got away from me, it got away from me. Thanks a lot. I know this is supposed to be a pep rally, uh, and uh, we're, we're uh, supposed to pep you up, uh, but we're going to play another super sad, slow song. Really. That's good. Nice. Nice little... This Brent's very clever. Uh, this is called Careless. You're in a hurry 
I'm stalling me me tonight you can dream while I drive don't be careless with me yet not yet I'm staying on the spiderweb roads don't know what we're waiting for people like us don't ever switch our videos from scene to scene but I've been wanting you so long I really don't know what to do I don't know what you want from me Dee Dee if you leave I'll cling to your sleep don't be careless with me yet not yet I still love you I'm still falling don't know what we're waiting for people like us don't ever switch our videos from scene to scene but I've been wanting you so long I really don't know what to do I don't know what you want from me it's agony it's agony don't know what we're waiting for people like us don't ever switch our videos from scene to scene it's agony it's agony who's pepped up after that <laughs> <laughs> this one actually this is this one actually is peppier this is our last song. This has been amazing. Uh, thank you. So I especially want to thank my dear friend, Ho Paul, who, uh, who was, if anybody watched the, the uh, president's Facebooking today, um, that was my friend, Ho Paul, holding the phone in, fr in front of the president's face. She has that kind of steady hand. I don't know how she does that. Uh, she is a close friend, and, um, and this is for her. It's called Need a Friend. <laughs> somewhere near the back where the bouncers won't attack I think the world's about to end I don't need your love I just need need a friend to guard the door I just need a couple minutes on the floor I just need to talk to you for a second I just need a break from the sound cause it's killing me you were supposed to be here before the last song you were supposed to bring me your brother's weed you were supposed to walk me home from the river man this is heartbreaking 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 why are they talking to my father? He's way behind the candelabra. Everyone is now and then. I don't need your love. I just need a friend. I just need a friend to guard the door. I just need a couple minutes on the floor I just need to talk to you for a second 
I just need a break from the sound Cause it's killing me You were supposed to be here before the last song You were supposed to bring me your brother's weed You were supposed to walk me home from the river, man This is heartbreak and heartbreak and heartbreak You were supposed to be here before the last song You were supposed to bring me your brother's weed you were supposed to walk me home from the river, man. This is heartbreaking, heartbreak, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Man, this is heartbreaking. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, guys. Have a great, great day. This is a great day. Give them another round of applause, guys. Give it up for them one more time. What a great evening. Check, check. What a great evening. Again, if you're watching at home, uh, the hashtag SOTU. We are getting ready for the uh, President Obama's final State of the Union address. It's moments away. We're having a lot of fun in here, though, right, guys? So we're going we're gonna to turn this room into a, a, a mini movie theater for the State of the Union. We're all going to watch it from in here in just a couple of moments. Uh, but actually, the, the President and First Lady have some special guests that they invited to L.A., and I got a chance to meet them a, a couple of minutes ago. I want you guys to take a look. That's not a real take a look for you. That's for everybody at home. That's like a, that's like a TV thing. That's like a take a look, and then it goes to here. So anybody that look back, you just... <laughs> You're not getting invited back to the White House. You're not getting This is Jaster speaking. Hi, Major Jaster. This is Tina Chen calling from the White House. Jenny? Yes. Hi, it's Jill Biden. Hello, how are you? Hello, Earl. It's Valerie Jarrett. You know, he saw your story on Humans of New York, as have millions of Americans. And the president has been um, deeply moved by the journey that you've made from Syria to the United States. He said, you go and see if you can find Edith for me. We are so admiring of you and your colleagues, you know, who went through Ranger School. How are you? Good, how are you? Do you remember we met at your community college in Austin? I'll, I'll never forget. <laughs> Your spirit of generosity and the gift that you gave him, I tell the story over and over and over again. I'm calling because we would like to invite you to attend the State of the Union next week. This is why we would like to invite you to sit with the First Lady. So that means you might be free on Tuesday night to come to the State of the Union? As his guest and sit in the box with the First Lady. Oh, Valerie, I'm so honored. <laughs> We are here with a very special guest for the president and the first lady. Why don't you tell everyone who you are and where you're from? I'm Edith S. Charles from Greenwood, South Carolina. And for anyone that doesn't know why you're invited to the White House, tell them why. Uh, it's because I'm the ordinary woman who did an extraordinary thing for the president. What was that? And that was fired up, ready to go. Fired up and ready to go. That went viral. So many people across the country felt your enthusiasm. Walk us through what happened that day. Um, the first time I met him? Yes. Okay. The first time I met him was when he came to Greenwood. It was in June the 16th, 2007. And he came into the room, and he looked like, you know, I don't want to be here, but I'm here. Uh, so what do you all want, you know? He didn't say that. I'm just saying that. But anyway, um, he began to tell us, introduce himself to us, mm -hmm. and to give us a reason why he wanted to be the president mm -hmm. and why he thought he would be the best president. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he was very good at doing what he does. So as he finished with his little speech, uh, 
Robert Tinsley, who's an attorney in Greenwood, said, Ms. Charles, why, why don't you do the fired up of the senator? I said, no, I just came to oh, work. Oh, so, so fired up was already a thing. Oh, yeah. That was, that's your thing already. That's my thing already, yeah. Got it, you got know, it. So, so you uh, just introduced the president to what yes, was already going down exactly. in South Carolina. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. And you've been uh, kind of his good luck charm ever since. He, you, you, you've done a lot of things for the administration. How do you feel going into this final uh, State of the Union address? Uh, I'm honored. Uh, I didn't dream that I would be here uh, to his last uh, State of the Union address, but I'm here and I'm grateful. Got it. So for anyone watching for the first time, can, can I do a fired up ready to go with you? Yes. Yeah, is, there a, is there a technique to doing it and doing it right? No, you just have to catch on. You just, okay, I'm ready to catch, to catch on. on. All right. Fired up. Fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. Fired up. Fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. Fired up. Fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. Fired up. Fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. Thank Ready you. Ready to go. Oh, oh, did I miss it? Was there another? <laughs> no, no, okay. No, 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 you no. did a remix on me. I thought we had. Okay. We worked on it. If I come to South Carolina, will you she cook God, I didn't know she was going to do that last right, extra it. one. All right. Uh, Jim, if you could introduce yourself to the people and tell everyone why you're here. Absolutely. Jim Obergefell, and I was the named plaintiff in the Supreme Court case Obergefell v. Hodges, which brought marriage equality to the entire United States. How does that feel? I mean, you're in the center of making a lot of people very happy. That's what I concentrate on, and that's been my experience the past year and a half, two years. People stop me to tell me stories and to thank me, and it feels great because all I see is happiness and joy, and that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing experience, something I never thought I would live through, mm -hmm. but it's been wonderful. And I did it because I loved my husband, wow. and that's what it all comes down to. What a great story. And now you're here at the White House. Uh, you're going with the First Lady and the President yes. over to the Capitol. Is this your first time meeting them? Is this your first time being here? How does it all feel? Well, it's my first time meeting the First Lady. I had the great pleasure of meeting the President back in June at the Pride Month reception here. Okay and I've been to the White House two times before this, but this event is just really special because it's small, it's mm -hmm. intimate, and I get to sit in her box for the State of the Union. Well, what's the process like getting here? What's the process picking out your outfit? Walk <laughs> us through any details of the night. As far as what I'm deciding what to wear, I got home last week. Actually, I was here in DC. I got home on Wednesday, went immediately to one store, bought a new suit. Yep. The next morning, I went to another store, store bought a different suit because I had to have options. You had to have <laughs> options. Me, I'm the same way. Exactly. I had to play it together. I, had to, I laid it out like the first day of school. Yes. You know, I had to have the options on the bed. Absolutely. And I think I brought 30, 35 bow ties with me. Okay, that's a lot of bow ties. But right, then I decided okay. I had to wear this one because Why? this is the tie I was wearing on decision day in the nice. Supreme Court. And it just seemed to be the fitting tie to wear for this event. I can I can only agree with you. You look amazing. Have a Thank great you. All time. of you will get the other Thank 34 so bow ties. Nice you. you have Hand a, a those very out. unique and special story. Could you share that with us on, on why you're here tonight? I'm here tonight because I had the privilege and honor to be one of the first females to attend the Army Ranger School. It is the U.S. Army's premier leadership school, and it has in its entire history, never been open to women before. And I also had the privilege to successfully complete it, which is why I'm here. And I'm specifically honored to be able to sit with the First Lady to represent everything that we can do if we want to and if we try. Now, you're going to be a special guest of the First Lady tonight. How do they contact you to tell you that? Do, do you get an official call? Is there a letter sent? How do, how do you find out that news, and, and, and how excited were you when you found out? Miss Tina Chen contacted me, and it was such an honor and a privilege, and also a high-pressure situation, knowing that I want to represent so much mm -hmm. of... I want to be a symbol for people who, again, want to try to do something that previously hasn't been allowed for them, young men or young women, to, to go out and try to do something that might be considered hard. You are 100% an inspiration, to say the least. Thank you so much, and enjoy the State of the Union. Thank you. Thank you. I had two patches when I was in Vietnam. Uh, one was my combat patch, which was the 173rd um, Sky Soldier the herd 
and the other patch was the 101st Screaming Eagles. They both were significant to me. Um, How long I, had you had, had, have your had Well, your I patch. took the patch in, in 1967, and I said, they're so precious that I don't want to lose them. So I separated them. I put one dog tag with the one patch, and I put the other patch with the other dog tag. Well, I ended up losing one. So, they, so the Screaming Eagle patch, the eagle, the 101st patch became even more yeah, symbolic yeah. to me because it was two and one. Yeah. But I carried that patch, uh, uh, the 101st Screaming Eagle patch, for more, actually more than 40 years. It, it, I went through uh, a lot of pain, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Um, and that patch was my way mm -hmm. of saying, wait, Earl, no matter how bad something gets, you're an American, we live in a great country, mm. and uh, it would give me what I needed. Yeah. Uh, I never thought I'd and, and you handed, share, share a part with it, but yeah, it did happen. You, you handed that patch to the president, and you later found out that that really inspired him. Right. I, gave, I passed that patch to the senator, the president. I never gave that patch to him from me. I passed it. I gave that patch to him in the name of the American people. Mm. Once it got in, and I was hoping that one day he would understand the significance of it. Mm. He did. Mm. He did. And sometimes people will ask me, hey, you see the patch? Don't, don't want to see it. Don't need to see it. It belongs to the American people. I carried it in the name of myself and the American people. It was passed on to him in the name of the American Well, we are all grateful. Thank you so much for your service. And you're going to have a fantastic time at the State of the you're Union more tonight. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good stuff, right? Special people, special stories. He, he said he held on to that patch for, for 40 years. Uh, he, he was doing security at a hotel uh, that then Senator uh, Obama was was doing a speech at, um, and he had went up in the elevator with him a couple of times. He had spent the, the entire day there, and at the end of the day, he handed him that patch and told him it was on uh, behalf of us, the American people. And that, that patch later, about five or six years later, uh, the president wanted to find him and bring him back because it meant so much to him. That moment meant so much to him. So we got a lot of great people here in D.C. today. Uh, and you guys, give yourself a round of applause. This is, this is amazing. Who who is here at the White House for the first time? Put your hands up so I can see you. Uh, wow. Okay. So you guys made security clearance. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I know when you walked through that gate before they gave you, you got a little nervous, didn't you? <laughs> Started thinking, did I pay my taxes on time? Uh, did my ex boyfriend say something bad about me on Facebook? They found out about. Uh, so you guys made it here. Congratulations. You're in a real life episode of Scandal, and right now. We are going to take this up another notch. Now, I started my career uh, before E. I worked on a show called 106 in Park. And now for me, you know, years later, it's, it's surreal for me to be able to introduce this guy at the White House who I've known for years. I've known his entire, we, we've known each other for years and years, the entire crew. And to, to do this type of introduction that I would have done back then here is an absolute honor for me. He's going to have a lot of fun with you guys. Please give a warm round of applause for Wale. Two, two, two. We're going to have some fun. Let's go. All my Wale fans, DC's prodigal son is here. Let's go. Hey. Looking at, looking at, looking what at you me. Looking at? Yeah, look at that, yeah. Look I need you stand up. Me. I hey. need you stand up, DC. Like honey on bees. Hey. Look at that, look at how hey. looking at hey. me. Hey, DC chilling, PG chilling. My name is Wale, and I can't, can't talk. Get it. Yo, I can't, can't talk. Get it. Can't talk. I need get everybody it. make Whoa. some noise. It's Say like start, start off all night. Hey. Kick it in the door, and, and I'm everybody problem. Starting this in my door now. I got field night talking about how you got them. Let's talk about that cause y'all yeah, got. Hey. Say you got a lot of whips. Well, well I, I got, got a lot. Hey, hey, I got the right to be gawky. Get so much cut, this jockey jock me. Hey, they mad as they not, not me. me. 
Hey, you Jeremy Shockey. Uh, uh. And if you never heard me properly, you speak garbage and, and we know about DC chillin', chillin', PG chillin', chillin', floor to the ceiling, oh. starting in my bed and then air. Get on my uh. DC model of the Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Get them all, get them all, get them all. Stack up your funds like a million bucks. Hey. Across the pond, they all know us international. Whoa, I'm driving my car in a foreign Shout place. Shout to Lady Gaga, she can't be here today. That ain't on my face. Hey, we want it all. We want it. We got it all yours. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Na 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 na. Hey hey hey. I'm gonna see if y'all got some rhythm. Hold on, can I see? No, I'm not. I ain't gonna embarrass you. Make some noise for Obama's for bringing me back to this jump, man. I never thought that, my, both of my parents are in Nigeria right now, but I never thought I'd make it to the White House. And it's my third time. Hit me. Money, make them clap. Everybody clap like this. Everybody clap like this, let's go. Hold me tight, let me go. Hey. In my heart, hey, I'm louder. in my soul. This one for you, Barack. Fill me up. He told me perform this one. Break me down. That wasn't a lie. Make me smile. I need to shine, shine, Make shine, shine. shine. Give, Give me love, these six. Take it all away. So let it out of my demographic, but I make it happen, baby. Hey, hey. Give me love. I need you to clap your hands for the change. Take it all Eight away. years worth of change, baby. Da, 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 da. Hey, hey. Ain't no love in no heart of city, that's what they tell me. Be with over 100, don't none of them know me. Son of a mother studying at UDC. Right. Sitting in taxi cabs while daddy roaming the streets. Woo. Seven hallelujahs, my sweet was clean. I wear it on everything, the American tees. Since 06, the most prolific in the DMV. Listen, when you get the keys inside them, you don't get the beat. Make a brother one, get the peace to get the peace. You gon' need more to Wikipedia than get to, to me. me. PT to Mo County, Whoa. that they all know about me. Uh -huh. Every hood, every burb, I got superb talent. From the city that made me, like you forever for it. Hope you celebrate every moment forever and know it. You made me what I am, you made me what I'm clap, not. Clap, clap, see, clap, clap, me clap, eight years, baby. Hey, give, give me love, love, baby. Not enough, not enough. Just a touch, baby. Do my this bro. is us, baby, this is us, baby. But uh, this a love, love hate thing. Hey. Uh, give me love, baby. Not enough, not enough. Just a touch, baby. This is us, baby. This is us, baby. I need you clap with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, hold me tight. Let's go. Clap. Let me go. Let's go. In my heart. If you at home yeah, watching this, soul, hey, you a witness to history right now. Me up, break me down. And if you're not, Make you're still with this history. Yeah. Eight years of change, Make baby. What's up? Give me love. Give me love, DC. Take it all away. Again. Give me love. La, da, 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 da. Obviously, this is not a rap concert. <laughs> but I told, I told Miss Michelle, I'm going to make it a rap concert for about 12 minutes. Everybody make some noise in this jump, man. The leader of the free world, having rap in the White House. God bless him. <laughs> Hip hop forever. Before I go, let's take him. This song is called White Shoes, and it's about some things. Let's do it. I grew up a kid, D.C. and Maryland, seeing a lot of, losing a lot of friends to gun violence. Take this good advice. Hey. Is they gonna judge you for life? Say we can't always be fly. We gon' be good as long as them sneakers wide. I know you know it's sick. You'll be alright. I said you'll be alright. Say you'll be alright. Positivity before we leave. Be yeah, happy right. new year, everybody. Hey, hey, Gucci has got so hood at him. Ice cream for the ice beats that's in the fashion. Hey. Yeah, being for real, go try being, being for real. real when you're black. Uh. And the black cast, the one thing was, was real. real. No law in London, we was on the budget. Hey. You know, sharing old navy so the army could be fresh and public. Right. Back then, for all your money, right. was a higher. 
But how you look at oh. Sneakers stores and laundry mats get all the money. And we up in DC getting all the honeys. Obama did eight years, make noise. Take this good advice. Uh, is they gonna judge you for life? Don't be scared to sing along, sing uh, the words, let's go. Say we can, give me cross face. Be fly. We gon' be good, long as our sneakers fly. White sneakers is a metaphor, y'all. Yeah, you'll be alright. Yeah, blue moon. Every blue moon. Alright. Shine on you. Yo, be, be alright. Alright, alright, yeah, yo. Yo, be alright. Here we go, I said, take this good advice. Clap, as they gonna judge you for life. Hey, and say we can always be fly. We gonna be good long as our sneakers wide. I love you, America. Make some noise for Wale, DC. My name is Wale. My fifth album, Shine, 2016. Shine on. Give it up one more time for Wale. <laughs> All right, guys, the moment is finally almost here. Uh, but let's 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 talk to you guys. We've been talking to everyone else. Let's talk to you guys. I'm going to jump into the audience right now. Uh, I hope I hope you guys are ready because we're coming down this row. What's your name? Where are you guys from? Um, I'm Alexa. I'm from Connecticut. Next, Alexa from Connecticut. Megan, I'm from Chevy Chase, Maryland. Chevy Chase, Maryland. What do you guys hope that the president addresses tonight uh, during the State of the Union? Um, I hope he addresses gun violence. Um, yeah, last week was amazing. Um, I work in gun violence prevention in Newtown, so it's near and dear to my heart. It's been a big issue. What about you? Uh, gun violence as well, but also immigration as well. So just making sure that we can really um, get refugees here and make everybody at home in our country. Another hot button issue. What's your name? Where are you from? Man? You got one of the bow ties uh, from Jim earlier. One of the bow ties came your way. You look fantastic. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Eric. I'm also from Connecticut. Eric from Connecticut. So Connecticut drove down. You guys are in the building. Uh, what do you hope that uh, the president addresses tonight during the State of the Union? Uh, so for me, it's about addiction awareness. Uh, I have personal ties with my family. So I'd love to see uh, what he has to propose about that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming out tonight. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Une. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Did you, f did you just fly in town? or? Uh DC for a while actually since December 27th so I changed my flight when I got the email saying that I could come here you changed your flight oh, so you're supposed to go home yeah. so there's there's some hungry dog waiting on you to come back yeah. at the door your mom is waiting for you everyone's waiting and you're just camping out in DC what, are you staying in a hotel are you staying with friends oh my brother lives here so I'm staying with him got it. so you're just messing up his whole flow <laughs> Why he no girls can come in and out of the house while <laughs> while sisters in town. Uh, what do you hope that uh, President Obama addresses tonight during his final State of the Union? Um, I would really like for him to address like the racial the racial problem that we're having in America. You know, uh, Black Lives Matter, and I really would like him to talk more about that and bring awareness to this country about the issues that are going on. One hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, what's your name? My name is Francesca, and I'm repping Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. A lot of Cape Verdes up there. What, what's your ethnicity? Where, where, are you, uh, where, where are your people from? My people, my people. I'm from Hollywood, California, so my <laughs> father is African American, mother's uh, Eastern European. Got it, got it. Okay, uh, so what do you hope that the president touches on tonight? All of the things mentioned before, but also um, equal access to opportunity for everyone, no matter where they come from, um, especially educational opportunity. Doesn't matter, low income, middle class, everybody should have a chance. Well, give it, yeah. Where, where were y'all? Did, did they give you these answers? You guys are on point. Like, I'm trying to, if somebody stuck a mic in my face and said, What do you hope you address? I'm like, uh, You know what? I just, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Uh, you guys are on point. What's your name? Where are you from? Huh? My name is Mohit Joffrey. I'm from California. Okay. Uh, tell us, for, for anyone at home that, that's watching right now, tell us about the vibe of this event. I mean, what'd you think? I mean, it's great. You can tell everyone here is excited about President Obama's last city in address. 
and um, he's done some great work over the past seven years, and we look forward to the next year. What, what do you hope he uh, touches on tonight? Definitely education and immigration, but also prison reform. I think that's a big topic that hasn't been touched so far. You know, I was here um, a couple of weeks ago for a program that touched on prison reform. This administration doing a lot with the, that. That's definitely uh, another good issue, because once reentry happens, we got we got to get everything together. Yeah. Okay, what's your name? Where are you from, man? Hey, my name's David Garber, and I'm from here in D.C., but I live in Rockville right now. Got it, got it. All right, uh, what do you think of tonight? Oh, it's been a great thing so far. You know, it's always fun to see um, Wale, but especially at the White House. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought she was going to say it was fun to see me, because, uh, uh, you know, I've been here uh, all night doing my best. You know, I, I, I thought I had some of my best. Uh, I'm seeing well. I, I thought I had some pretty good jokes in there, but... Uh, you, you only love to see Wale. That's fine. Uh, let's talk about the real reason why we're here tonight, and that's all to see President Obama. We're going to see him on this screen in just a, a couple of moments. What do you hope that he touches on tonight uh, that the American people need to hear about? Um, I, you know, obviously a lot of what everyone else has said, but I think for me also I uh, would love to hear a lot about uh, the wealth inequality. Um, you know, as uh, the vice president was speaking about growing the middle class, I think that's you know very important for whomever takes office next to, uh, you know, move forward with that progress. Some very uh, important issues. Give them all a round of applause. I didn't, I, I honestly, uh, Stephanie, I, di I didn't think that was gonna go as well as it did. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta be honest with you, you guys had some amazing points and I'm sure the president will address all of those things tonight. So if you are at home, once again, we want you to be a part of the conversation. The hashtag is S-O-T-U, so too. The final State of the Union address that President Obama will ever give will take place in just a couple of minutes. We are here in Washington, D.C. We're gonna be watching the event. Make sure to spread the word to your friends and your friends' friends to all tune in and watch this address tonight as he addresses some very important issues. My name is Terrence J, and on behalf of all of my friends here at the White House, have a great night and enjoy President Obama with the State of the Union Address. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. God, give it up for Adam, he put this event on. The state of our economy is a concern that and where's, rises where's above Jesse all Jesse at? Us. Put it up. Jesse's in the back somewhere. Jesse, man, weak. I appreciate you. Thanks and to all my friends at the White House. Shaken. This is truly an but honor. You guys have been an amazing crowd. Have a great times. evening and enjoy the Tonight, state of the I want guys. every American to know this. We will rebuild. We will recover. And the United States of America will emerge stronger than before. One year ago, I took office amid two wars, an economy rocked by a severe recession, a financial system on the verge of collapse, and a government deeply in debt. So we acted, immediately and aggressively. And one year later, the worst of the storm has passed. We bet on American workers. We bet on American ingenuity. And tonight, the American auto industry is back. It is our unfinished task to restore the basic bargain that built this country. The idea that if you work hard and meet your responsibilities, you can get ahead. No matter where you come from, no matter what you look like or who you love, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. Our unemployment rate is now lower than it was before the financial crisis. More of our kids are graduating than ever before, more of our people are insured than ever before. Every three weeks, we bring online as much solar power as we did in all of 2008. We have risen from recession freer to write our own future than any other nation on Earth. It's now up to us to choose who we want to be over the next 15 years and for decades to come. Our destiny remains our choice. And tonight, more than two centuries later, it's because of our people that our future is hopeful, our journey goes forward, and the state of our union is strong. It is you, our citizens, who make the state of our union strong, and the state of our union will always be strong. Someday, years from now, our children can tell their children that this was the time when we performed. In the words that are carved into this very chamber, 
something worthy to be remembered. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.